one person. Prasanna, good afternoon. And uh, <clears throat> we were hoping to have more uh, students, but uh, unfortunately, I think because of this time, people may not be able to come. Anyhow, but we will start our first day session. That would be an uh, introduction uh, class. So probably in this scenario, what we will do is uh, we will try to talk about uh, the basics of cluster that you know why we have to go for cluster, what is the need of cluster and uh, what is this high availability concept in various things. So probably you might have gone through my introductory class, what uh, I have already recorded on the other webinar when I have given it and we have put it on uh, our website. So if you want to know more uh, about that, then you can watch that video as well. Apart from that, Let's try to talk about that, you know, what is this high availability concept and uh, why do I have to go for high availability concept. So basically, high availability is related to applications high availability where I would like to keep my application up and running for the long time even if one particular node is down and how I am going to attend that, let's try to talk about it. Initially, how high availability concept got the picture or got its way in production, let's try to talk about it. In the beginning era, we used to have machines with very limited resources where we used to have one power supply and uh, we used to have one hard disk, one CPU probably, one RAM and one network card. Now in this particular scenario, if I am running my production application and it is very crucial for me, assuming. So if it is running in this environment, it is running at a very risky point of view. So if you see the scenario, there are lots of something called as SPOF, which is nothing but single point of failure. Now, when we talk about single point of failure, that means that if one thing fails, the entire setup is going to fail out. Assume that power supply fails, the total setup would be down. If the disk crashes, the total setup would be down. If CPU crashes or RAM crashes or network goes missing, the entire thing will get affected and my high availability will not be maintained. So my application is down. Now if the application is down, then the production is down and production is down. So our company's reputation would be down and we would be losing out the most important component for any organization is the business. So in later point of time, modern system used to be available. Like in today's world, we have modern systems which used to be having with multi components inside it. Like we used to have, uh, we have currently multiple power supplies so that if one power supply fails, the other power supply will take charge. We used to have uh, multiple hard disks where you will convert those hard disks into RAID and you will use it as one disk. Behind the scene it will be multiple disks for better performance and high availability. Similarly, we would be using multiple CPUs over here multiple RAMs maybe and for network redundancy multiple NIC cards. So over here you can see that the total setup what I am seeing is highly redundant. I have two power supplies, I have multiple disks, 
I have multiple CPUs, I have multiple RAMs, multiple network card, but still I cannot call this particular machine as highly available setup because still in this entire setup there is a single point of failure. And what is that single point of failure? The single point of failure over here is your entire box or your entire server because over here I am only dependent on one machine though it is having everything in multiple but still this box itself is a single point of failure if something goes wrong in that box maybe motherboard crashes out or you know the power goes completely out to which UPS it is connected so in this scenario though we have multiple things connected over there if the base is not redundant then the entire setup will be down and again I'm going to have that downtime kind of thing in my environment. To eliminate this particular thing, we use this high availability concept. The concept of high availability or any setup is considered as highly available when it does not have any single point of failure inside it. For example, I can call a setup high available setup only when it is highly redundant without any single point of failure. Now, assume that we have a cluster which is a combination of computers or servers. So in a cluster, I am taking minimum two nodes assume this is two node cluster node is nothing but the computers that participate in your cluster environment so in this environment assume that I am having two nodes it can be physical machine or in today's world it can be a virtualized machine also so I'll take this machine assume it is having multiple power supply multiple disks and uh, multiple CPUs, multiple RAMs and uh, multiple NICs for better redundancy. Same is the case from second machine. Multiple power supply, multiple disks, multiple CPUs, multiple RAMs and for network redundancy, multiple network over here. So this kind of setup which is going to work for at least one or multiple applications to keep them highly available is considered as a high availability cluster where what happens over here is two nodes or two machines are working for the same motive to keep the application live in any situation. Now in this scenario one node will be active and the other node will be passive or standby. So application may be running on first machine. If anything goes wrong, assume that one power supply fails, other will be working, one network fail, other will be working, one disk fail, other will be working. But if it goes more crucial, the last available resource is also gone. So then what happens is, the application which is running over here will be migrated to the second machine with a very very small downtime so at least there will be a downtime but not permanent downtime it will be a temporary downtime where for a few moments my application will go offline and again after a few minutes it will be back up and running and my business will be back on wheels so in this scenario what happens over here is we will try to make a setup where I'm trying to eliminate any uncertainties in my setup and to eliminate any you know unplanned downtime kind of thing so what happens is suddenly if something goes wrong and the system goes out then the entire production may be down so in this scenario the application will be moving out to the other machine and it would be continue running with a very very minimal set of downtime so this is something called a high availability concept which have been introduced to keep the application, the bread and butter of the organization,
to be highly available in any situation. There might not be any situation where my most important object of the organization is down for a long time and as a result of which I may be losing out the business. Now, who provides this high availability solution? So if we talk about that who provides this high availability solution, there are many kind of uh, you know high availability solutions available depending upon environment to environment that what environment you are using upon that we may choose a better option that is available with us for example that if I am using different operating system so depending upon that operating system I can opt any solution which I wanted to look. For example, if I'm going for AIX or let's start with Windows, the most common thing. So if I'm going for Windows, the cluster for Windows available is Windows clusters. If I'm going for AIX, one of the what I can say Unix available from IBM, then the cluster service for it is HACMP or nowadays we call it as PowerHA. If you are going for another Unix like HP, then we have uh, something called Service Guard. If you are going for Solaris, then we have uh, something called Sun or nowadays Oracle Cluster and uh, if you are going for any other it may also have its own kind of thing especially when it comes to Linux and in Linux if you are talking about Red Hat what we are going to learn we use is something called Red Hat Cluster Suite also, all these kinds of clusters are OS dependent, like Windows cluster can only be applied on Windows, HACMP, PowerHA can only be applied on AIX, whereas Service Guard is exclusively for HP, Sun or Oracle cluster is definitely for Solaris, whereas RHCS depends on Red Hat platform. Now, if I want a setup that can be run any of the above set operating system without the boundaries of operating system or limitation of operating system that it should only be used for Windows, Linux, AIX or Solaris, we can go for something called Veritas cluster. So the product belongs to Symantec and uh, name is Veritas cluster. So Veritas cluster can be applicable on Windows, AIX, I doubt about Windows, but AIX, HP, Solaris, Linux, on any platform wherever you want, you can put it on the top of it and you can use it. But if you see, Windows is again available with Windows if you purchase Windows. If you go for IBM, AIX, HACMP, it's again a paid thing that is not freely available. So as HP uh, and Sun Oracle cluster, but when it comes to Red Hat cluster suite, Red Hat cluster suite is a built-in feature that is available with your Red Hat version. So when you go for Red Hat operating system, by default that operating system comes with cluster component inside it, which you can apply and you can configure a Red Hat cluster on the top of it. Whereas Veritas cluster is again a paid kind of component where you need to purchase the licenses, where you need to uh, go for their limitations and all and we have to use. But any organization who is running Red Hat and if they want to put their application on high available concept, then they don't have to purchase any extra thing. You can simply 
go with Red Hat Cluster Suite that is a built-in kind of component that comes with your Red Hat operating system. So like that what we can do is we can use uh, this Red Hat Cluster Suite and we can deploy it. Now when it comes to Red Hat Cluster Suite why do we call it as a suite over here? It's quite simple like you know hotel rooms would be having suite which is a combination of multiple rooms, all the required rooms like your home or flat. So in the same way all the components have been clubbed together and it is called as a suite. So Red Hat Cluster Suite is a combination of multiple tools that we are going to use in a clustered environment. Now let's try to talk about the architecture that you know how it is going to work. See in any clustered environment the first question arises over here is where we are going to keep the application data. Assume that we have two node cluster, node 1 and node 2. So and I am going to put them in a cluster for high availability. Now when I go with a high availability concept the question arises that you know where my application data is going to be maintained either on node A or on node B. So in this scenario I cannot keep the data inside any node directly or completely. For in this scenario what happens is if I maintain the data in node A's internal disk then there might be a situation arises over here that if node A is down disk is not reachable. If disk is not reachable how node 2 or node B will know that up till now whatever updates has happened. So in this scenario neither we will keep the data on node A or node B but we required something called shared storage. Generally what happens is people will take SAN into consideration storage area network where what we will do is from SAN we will take one LUN maybe of 1 GB, 10 GB whatever is the requirement of your application and we will share it in the shared mode. So when we give it to the clients in the shared mode the same disk is visible to node A it is also visible to node B. So in this scenario what happens? Whatever I am writing over here will be visible here. Though it is not accessible here but it will always get updates that what is happening on node A. Now in this scenario if node A fails the application data is available in the fully updated mode on node B where only the application services will get start and application will start with fully updated data. So again in this scenario we require something called shared storage. Now how to get this shared storage? There are various methods to get it. You can use SAN, you can use NAS or whatever thing you are having. In this particular module what we are trying to teach you, we are not going to use storage area network exclusively where you can use it. If you use it you don't have to do much on storage part. A SAN admin will directly give you a LUN which would be in the shared mode visible on both sides. So our role is very limited to receive it and to work with. But we would like to teach you more on shared storage. For example for a rich company it is quite easy to obtain a SAN and they can work with. But assume that I would like to keep my personal website on highly available mode. Now in the scenario as a normal admin I don't have SAN at my workplace or at my home to run my website in the clustered environment. So what should I do? I cannot purchase a SAN which cost 4 to 5 lakhs rupees or more depending upon the model. So in this scenario instead of using a specialized SAN what I will do is I will take a normal Linux box and I will convert that Linux box into an iSCSI server. So here we are going to learn 
that how to share a LUN with the help of iSCSI server and for the better performance for redundant environment using multiple networks and multiple NICs which will be giving me multi-pathing option which we are going to talk in the coming classes when we try to talk about the shared storage. So only an overview I would like to give you that here we are going to convert one Linux box into iSCSI server and with the help of that iSCSI server we are going to make a shared LUN visible to both the machines which is going to work for keeping the application data available on both the sides as and when the updates are happening. So again in this particular module we are going to learn that how to make that shared storage with the help of iSCSI server. So as we understood the importance of shared storage that it is quite very important that without that shared storage it would be quite tough to have the shared environment and failover may take long time. So in this scenario as we have seen that there is a shared storage necessary. In this picture they have considered SAN storage but in ours we would take an iSCSI server and while talking about iSCSI server I would also talk about the uh, SAN storage also if that is a criteria then how to deal with SAN and fiber channels everything. So overall you can see in this environment we have the most redundant environment. We have multiple nodes, multiple networks, one is internal switch, other is external switch, two networks we are maintaining over here. We have a fiber channel to keep our application data mapped to all the nodes so that every node can see what are the changes happening in the storage. Now anyhow these things we are going to talk in detail when we go for the further classes but as of now I would like to talk about that what are the features Red Hat cluster will provide you or what kind of cluster Red Hat will give you so Red Hat cluster can give you two types of clustering general and normal feature what we have seen is cluster management and service failover. If one node fails service will move to other. Network load balancing and global read write file system for high performance computing. What are these three? Let's try to talk. First let me talk about the failover cluster. Failover cluster is a general clustering component what we have talked so far. Now in failover cluster what happens is assume we are having two node cluster node A and node B both working for one application whatever web server or whatever you are using and to have data available on both nodes we are using SAN or we are using iSCSI server whatever NAS or something you are using. So in this scenario my application is active on node 1 and it is standby and it is standby on second node. So in this scenario what happens over here is it is active on first node and it is standby on second node. As soon as node A fails out or drops out the application will get migrated to second node and here it will become active with a minimal downtime of 2 to 3 minutes it will take that much of time to move it out from one machine to other machine and it will be powered on on the other machine and it will start working. So in this scenario you have seen that you know how services will be moving to the other node and it will be back into production. But the problem with this kind of setup or limitation of this kind of setup is it is not a zero downtime feature where I don't want even a single second of downtime. And let me tell you that we are only going to talk about this failover component in our module. So 
in a scenario where you cannot afford downtime, where you want zero downtime kind of environment or fault tolerance kind of environment like YouTube, Facebook or Google, you have never seen these websites to be down even for a single second from the years they are running and how is it possible and also in this scenario I have two nodes one is active and other is passive so all the load all the traffic all the hits are only going to one node the other node is sitting idle it will only come into the picture when node 1 fails so for a place where I have huge load on the traffic there are loads of uh, traffic flowing in and flowing out many people coming in and coming out and where I cannot afford the downtime then I can go for load balancing cluster or parallel cluster concurrent cluster whatever you call it so in this scenario when we are talking about the concurrent cluster or parallel cluster what happens let's try to see in a parallel cluster definitely I require a shared storage where I would be having multiple nodes participating in a cluster all would be receiving the LUN or the shared storage from SAN or RiceCasy or whatever it might be. Now earlier scenario we have seen that people have only connected to the server which was active and the other one was passive. Now here I have three nodes A, B, C. So when it comes to parallel cluster all the nodes will be having application in the active mode. None of them will be in the standby mode where what happens is between my cluster nodes and between the traffic what is flowing in I would be having a network load balancing machine. So all the traffic will first hit to this router and here it will decide that where should it be navigate should it be going to node 1, node 2 or node 3 it will find out that what is the load on either of the node and whichever is having low node, low load it will try to transfer the traffic over there so like that what happens is all the cluster in your environment would be active people will be hitting that router and that router will route the traffic to the least load kind of machine or even if it is equal then it will equally distribute the load so like that the load will be balanced and in this scenario if one particular node fails out also then the other two will be giving the service so here even if one node or one path fails still I don't require the downtime so over here what happens is all the nodes will be active so here I may not be suffering with the downtime everything will be going online for number of time if one node fails also two nodes are there two are failed third is there so here people will not be facing any downtime so this is also one of the criteria what your Red Hat gives now if you want to keep your file system to be active on all nodes then I require a special file system that would be GFS global read write file system that can be concurrently accessible from multiple nodes see what happens is our general file system EXT 2, 3, 4 or XFS these are only one side accessible file system so if any operating system is using on that OS only I can use it I cannot use it for concurrent access or parallel access from multiple machine so in that scenario I require a special file system that would be mounted on all and it would be giving me access to read and write from any node 
That is the reason we require the global file system. In our module, we are going to talk about failover cluster and GFS. Network load balancing something which we are not going to cover because it's a very, very detailed chapter that is not regularly covered in the clustered environment. So whenever we talk about high availability or cluster, we will talk about failover cluster because when it comes to network load balancing, it is covered in a different module that would be fault tolerance or something. So in our cluster, we have lots of things like, you know, quorum device, which of your shared storage, fencing device to find out the faulty machine and put it outside of the cluster so that it should not remain in the cluster and give you trouble. And also we have some components that we are going to use like UC, Ritchie, Conga, Cluster Manager, Resource Group Manager, Clustered Logical Volume Manager where if I wanted to use it on the clustered environment. Similarly, we are having something called GFS component where I would be using global file system as a multi-access file system. So these are the things that we are going to cover in our uh, what I can say module. Now in our module, we may be talking about various clusters like uh, uh, we would try to talk about first thing web cluster or you can call it as HTTP cluster. We would be talking about uh, Samba cluster and we would be talking about NFS as a cluster. We would be talking about MySQL database as a cluster. We would be seeing all the practicals of all these four things and also we are going to discuss about Oracle as a cluster, Oracle 11G or 12C, whatever you want to put. But basically what happens is Oracle database people does not prefer that their cluster should be maintained on OS side like uh, what I can say Windows or Linux or any HP, AIX, whatever it might be. Instead of that, they have their own application level clustering called RAC, Real Application Cluster, which they will be using exclusively to maintain the clustered application for database that would be 11G or 12C, whatever you are using. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to talk about Oracle 11G, 12C kind of thing. We will try to talk about initially the introduction part, what I have talked about today. Again, we will repeat the architecture that you know how and what are the things that is needed. We are going to talk about the requirements and we will try to configure an iSCSI storage for shared learn with multiple paths and we will try to eliminate that paths when it reaches to the client. Again on the pathing, we will talk more about SAN multipathing and iSCSI multipathing, how to eliminate it, what is it, what are the things that we will use to eliminate it, native and software based multipathing. Then we will talk about web cluster, we will talk about how to install the components of your cluster like Lucy, Richie, Conga, what are the features of these fellows and how to access them, how to work with them and finally we will build the clusters and we will test it out the failover that whether it is functioning properly or not. Finally, we will also talk about the uh, what I can say clustered uh, oracle that how you can put it. We have uh, some nodes that we can share with you to build uh, oracle cluster on Red Hat cluster suite and also we will going to talk about the command line tools that how you can build the cluster and manage a cluster via command line if you don't want to use the graphical console. So all these things would be covered in your uh, clustered environment. 
So, uh, Prasanna, if you have any doubts or queries, you can put forward. I would like to answer. Anyway, from my side, uh, it's done. If you have any queries, you can mail to us, you can write to us, and I would like to help you out in any queries if you are having. And uh, anyway, once you have enrolled for it, then we will start working with our classes regularly. So you can talk to Chandra or you can talk to any of my online team who would be helping you if any uh, questions are there with you. So that's it for the day and uh, thank you so very much for joining this webinar.